Dow, wow, stocks rocking in the first half of the year with investors shaking off those price spikes at the store. So are we in store for more green? Let's get the read from our market gurus, Scott Martin, Eddie Gabor, and Melissa Armo. Scott, what's the second half look like? I think it's going to be bumpy, Charles. And it's look, it's great how we finished the first half of the year. There was a lot of anticipation, a lot of sentiment increase, and frankly, a lot of deliverance on the part of the economy. But now the expectations are high. We're, we're expecting a big economic reopening. We're expecting a lot of folks to go back to work and, oh, by the way, be productive. And we're expecting earnings to deliver from the S&P 500 companies. So for my money, I think it's more of a, say, watch and be more careful than we were maybe in the first half of the year just because of all the expectations that are out there, of which one or two of those is likely to fall flat, in my opinion. You know, Melissa, what's really interesting is I don't know we've ever seen it, well, once, uh, that we have five quarters in a row of 5% plus gains in the market. It only happened one other time in 1954. The rest of the next year was up 25%. Can lightning strike again? Well, I will say this. I think the summer is going to be bullish. I think the next two months we're going to continue to be on a tear. And many people are expecting that we're going to fall and it's just not happening. So shorts are getting trapped. If you're in the market long term, I mean, just ride it out is what I say. I think the second half of the year in the fall, though, is a little harder to predict what's going to happen. God forbid something happens with this Delta variant that they're talking about with COVID or any kind of shutdown. Yeah, no, no doubt, Eddie, there's a whole lot of things that normally uh, investors don't have to worry about. Exogenous events, things on the horizon, things bubbling up, the Federal Reserve. It's hard to navigate it, but what do you think is going to happen? So, look, it's been a heck of a six months, and I guess the reason why my Twitter handle's Common Sense Bull is when you've had a huge run-up, it never hurts to take a little bit off the table. So our playbook is we think July we're going to continue to see a bullish trend upwards because we're going to refer to that as our catch-up trade because a lot of people have missed this move. But Jackson Hole in August has our attention, and we think that's when you're going to start to see the markets really sell off. And we could see a pretty good size dip, 10 to 15 percent, because I find it hard to believe that by August, the Fed is going to continue to ignore the inflationary pressure that's going to hit. It's going to be higher than they're anticipating and leading the market to believe. And they're going to have to change their language and start pivoting. So we think that's going to be the start of the short-term correction that we will see. And then we will get, hopefully, that Santa Claus rally uh, that we'd like to see in a bull market. So 12 months out, we like it. But that's our playbook here in the next six months. Scott, you mentioned earnings. Uh, you know, I think earnings are going to be phenomenal. Like, I think this last quarter was one of the best earnings periods ever. I think the next one's going to be better. And I hear what everyone's saying about the Fed, but they keep fooling everyone. I think Jay Powell is going to ignore the data. Uh, what happens if we keep this momentum going? Do you want to guess at where the top is going to be? Well, uh, Jay Powell has to ignore the data, Charles, because because that fits his narrative. And, and he's right. I mean, come Jay Hole or the Jackson Hole meetings, really. I mean, he's going to have to ignore the inflationary data that's right in front of his face. As far as the earnings go, though, I'm with you, Charles. I'm expecting great earnings as well. But so are a lot of market participants. So is the market action. So unless these earnings are gangbusters, unless they blow the doors off, I think the market might be ho-hum. All righty. Let me uh, switch gears here, uh, folks, because more states over the weekend dropping those extended unemployment benefits before they run out in September. Melissa, do you think it's working? Do you see any evidence that people are now going back to the labor force? As far as New York City, where I live, it's not happening yet. <laughs> I mean, it's a big, big problem in a city like New York where you have regular people that you need to do the jobs, the delivery people, the people in the retail stores, the people in the salons. People are not back to work. It's difficult to get a cab. Cab drivers are not even working. About 15 percent of the cabs are running, the yellow cabs in New York City. We have to get people back to work because if people are not working, then it takes longer to get goods, products, and services. If you're ordering furniture or anything that you want right now, or even if you call on the phone right. and you want to pay a, pay a bill, you're on hold forever. Why? Because people aren't working. They're not handling. The service isn't there. Productivity is low. People got to get back to work. You know, Eddie, uh, I say this is the greatest jobs market ever, and it's being met with the greatest general strike ever. I, I mean, it's amazing. What do you think? Is it going to, we're going to get any relief? People going to go back to work? 
I think they are looking. The jobs data last week, we started to see an uptick in the states that changed their stance on the extra unemployment benefits. So I think as they start to roll off, you will see an uptick. But look, the labor cost is a big issue, which is another big inflationary thing that I think the Fed is missing. My 14-year-old just got his first job. He's getting paid $15 an hour to scoop ice cream. I mean, let's go. I mean, it's un insane what the labor market is going to look like moving forward. So it's going to be a small, uh, slow recovery. Uh, but I think you're yeah. starting to see that trend happen already in a short period of time. $15 a day would have been phenomenal when I was 14. Eddie, <laughs> Melissa, <laughs> Scott, thank you all very much. So with a calendar crunch facing the Senate to save Americans from more price spikes in the store, we'll explain. And later, what would it take for you to break free from social media? You won't believe what some folks said they'd rather give up instead. Now, here's a hint. It's not great news for Fido.